Going live now. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Dude, I Love My Ride. And today I've got Chris Lane here all the way from Phoenix, Arizona okay. with his brand new 2017 Chevy Colorado ZR2. And uh, Chris, first of all, I want to thank you for driving up from Arizona. I know you didn't do it just for us, but nevertheless, thank you. Oh, of course. Of course. Huge fan. Uh, and the cool thing is we just uh, got off of Cliffhanger 2.0 where we actually took that bad boy up to the top to see how it does because we're waiting for Chevy to lend us one and that's not coming till October. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go underneath the truck after we uh, talk a little bit and see what kind of damage it did, yeah. if any. Yeah. Yeah? All right, so tell me about the fact that you bought a ZR2. Why did you buy a ZR2? Um, so I've always loved trucks. Uh, a while ago I sold my last F-150 and bought a Honda Civic and I was after that and I was like I really want another truck and and I got into interested in off-roading I wanted to have something that I can take off-road and after doing a lot of research and even asking TFL truck what they recommend a good off-road truck would be for under 50 grand uh, their best answer was the Colorado Zero 2 and I did some more research into it and I really liked it and went out and got one so you got it because we recommended it not a hundred percent, but that, that because, was definitely because part Nathan of it. is behind the camera. Is it you? Is it you're doing Nathan? That's what I did. <laughs> it's all me. It's all on Nathan. <laughs> so, are you happy with the truck? Are you glad you got it? I'm so glad. I love the truck. It it does anything I want it to do. It's great on road. It's my daily driver. It's what I take to work, and it, it's great. I love it. So, what kind of fuel economy are you getting, or did you get driving up here from Phoenix? That's a thousand miles. Yeah. Uh, so what my computer is saying is about 20 miles per gallon, and the EPA highway estimated MPG is about 18. So I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, how it's doing. And that's the uh, 3.6 liter, not the eco, not the not eco diesel, not, not the Duramax, maybe Duramax. Right, yeah, it's the, the V6. And what would you say is your favorite thing about the truck? There's a lot of excitement out there. People really, you know, are interested in this thing. What do you like the most about it? Um, it's a, I, I would have to say the shocks, the the Multimatic yeah. SSV dampers, like the way they perform on and off road is phenomenal. Really? Yeah. All right. And what's your least favorite thing about it? My least favorite thing I would say is for whatever reason the driver's side window has an auto up and down feature. The passenger side feature only has auto down and doesn't go auto up. That's so a I little try to get them, out, huh? Right, yeah, I try to get them to both go up, and it, it's just like a, it's a little pet peeve. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I mean, you know, if you're going to do auto up, do it on both. Right, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I hate it when they just do it on the, on the driver's side. That's even worse. No, <laughs> nobody it. rolls just one window down. I know. And, and how much can that cost? How much can that little whatever circuit it is cost, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's not much. Yeah, yeah. And so um, did you look at other trucks like the Taco or... The Frontier, and why did you decide to go with the Chevy? Um, you know what, I really didn't look into the Frontier too much, yep. but from what I have looked at, it seems like a legit truck. Um, the Taco, I didn't really like because of the way you sit in a Taco, you sit a little bit lower. Um, so I went to the Chevy because you feel like, it, you know, you feel like you're sitting in a full-size truck. It's way bigger now than the last generation was. And uh, the front-locking differential and the, the shocks is really what sold me on it. It's, as capable as a Jeep Rubicon, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know, that's a great point because we took our new Lyfted JK, Jeep Wrangler, up and kind of compared the two. And that video is uh, coming up, so we're going to edit that and probably publish it next week, wouldn't you say, Nathan? Yeah, next week. Yeah, but it was really interesting and really fascinating. To kind of, We didn't do a direct comparison, but to have both the Jeep, which actually doesn't have lockers or uh, okay. disconnectable sway bars, go up. Uh, and the results were kind of interesting, but you'll have to wait for that. Now, Let's get back to the pickup truck. Uh, you live in Arizona. Yeah. Uh, so do you go off-road in Arizona? I do. Where do you go? Uh, I go to Butcher Jones Recreation Area mostly, and I'm starting to explore other trails out there. But Butcher Jones is a lot of fun. You hang out by the beach and the lake. Nice, nice. And uh, now that you've taken it here, because obviously that's more desert. This is more mountain. Mm -hmm. um, how did it do in the desert compared to in the mountains? You know, because we've got rocky, kind of sandy, and you've got sand and, well... Practice. <laughs> yeah, uh, it seems to handle the sand, and, and out in Arizona, there may be a lot of corrugation, but there's not a lot of loose rock like there was on Cliffhanger 2.0. Yeah. It still did Cliffhanger great, in my opinion, but it was a little bit tougher for it. Now, one of the things that we noticed was with the Jeep, all you do because we don't have any of the fancy uh, off-road stuff yet, you just put it in four low, and away you go. This mm -hmm. truck, you got to do a lot of little yeah. finicky button things, and you were talking about that. What, what was your experience? Uh, 
it's just like it's a small headache. Just some extra steps you got to. You got to make sure you have off road mode. You got to throw in neutral before you put in four low, and then it takes it a second for that to figure out. And then turning traction control off can take a minute. You know. So so there's a lot of little buttons you have to do, and it, and then yeah. when you turn the ignition off, yeah, you have then, to do it again. Exactly. It stays like in four low or high or something, but everything else you got to reset. All right, Nathan, you ready to walk? Uh, uh, um, I'm putting people uh, on timeouts and whatnot. Okay. <laughs> Are people making nasty comments? No, just to each other, I think. Yeah. But, we don't. Uh, hey, guys, we have a simple rule: no mean-spirited comments. I mean, it's. Uh, Kind of a, a truck community of guys who love pickups, and we don't need trolls out there. So we really don't like mean spirit of comments. Right. So one of the questions, I believe it came from Andy, is do you think the V6 is enough, or would you rather have a V8 in there? Ooh. That's a good question, Andy. Yeah. So I had, I had an F-150 with the V8 in it, and I loved it. If they could shoehorn a V8 into this truck, it would be outstanding. Do they need to? Probably not. The V6... We'll do what you want it to. I just would like some more power. But who doesn't? At high elevation, I would imagine that was a bit of an issue. Did you feel a big drop-off in power? A little bit, yeah, actually. I've noticed that since I've been up here. Okay, and are those tires factory tires? They are. are they? They are the 31-inch Goodyear Wrangler Dirt Tracks. And we discussed possibly putting 33s on there, but if you did that, you'd have to lift it, right? Correct. Yeah, the front you can't you can't do, but the back you can do, right? Right. Well, why don't you walk them around, Nathan, and I'll get the camera, and you can kind of show them what kind of tires it has and the issue with actually lifting it. Okay. People ask you, what kind of transmission does it have? It's got an eight-speed automatic transmission. All you right. can't get it in a manual. All right. So this uh, is a bummer. It is a bummer. Sure, guys, you guys stick together. I can only get one of you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Come on over here. All right. Uh, what we're gonna do is first quickly talk about these are the tires now. Right now, it's showing a great deal of ground clearance. But the real issue is rubbing. So if he was to turn this wheel the opposite direction, currently this size, there's enough for about, what, about an inch and a half's worth of clearance? You can see it. Yeah, it's about an inch and a half. Yeah. Now, if you put 33s on there, you're going to have to start trimming some plastic. And I know that that's something that you might want to avoid for a little while. Yeah, maybe. So. But the right height on this is excellent. What's the maximum at the shock? You said 8.9 8 8 inches, 8 .9 inches of ground clearance. That's really good. Now when we were bopping around with this thing, we did hit a few rocks and you'll hear it on the video. The video I promise you is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I think we should go underneath and have a look. Okay, yeah, once yeah. you crawl underneath and I'll go underneath there with you guys. And let's see how much da if we did any damage. Alright. Alright. So, Let's check the skid plates first. So I see some scratching here on this transfer case, transfer case skid plate. Ah, like that wasn't there before. Some scratching on your rear shock mounts on the lower section. Look. Oh yeah, you can yeah. see that. Just a little bit of paint, but mm -hmm. it's definitely uh, <laughs> they definitely got a little bit of uh, wear on them now. Yeah. Um, I think. I'm the sure there's okay. some extra scrapes on these front skid plates, but you know they're doing their job. How well, are the rock exactly sliders? They're asking. Um, you know what? I have yet to actually use those. They yeah. haven't, haven't hit anything. Up. This so, truck sits two inch higher than the regular Colorado, and it, you know that helps out. And the lowest point is those uh, that Nathan's looking at, right? Yeah, yeah, right over here, and you can actually see I'll a little bit of trail marking. Let me show them. So, what's the lowest point on this truck? Those, those. Uh, right there. Yeah, and you can see where they got hit, actually. Yeah, there's a little bit of. Um, Right Paint there. missing, I would imagine. I think it's plastic. Is it, it is, plastic? It is plastic, yeah. There's a little bit of a guard on there. And it yeah, right there, you can see it. It's, mm -hmm. And it's 8.9 inches. Now, bear in mind, that was on Cliffhanger 2.0, and it was on a very difficult uh, part of the mountain. It's really tough right now. Uh, rocks are huge, ruts are deep. Everything about it is more challenging than it normally is, I think. And at r this point, I'm actually surprised that that's the only thing I can see that scratch. I thought that you might have nailed something maybe on your drive shaft or something look like at, that. Look how clean the drive shaft looks. Yeah. You, the, the one of the Wrangler is all rusty. Yeah, look, it's look all at rusty. That one. That one looks, and here are the shocks. Let me show you guys the shocks. They're right there. Those are spool valve shocks. Uh, and that's Formula One technology, basically. That's right. Tell them about it because you went to the event. I yeah. did not. Yeah. So, um, you know, shocks have uh, basically different kinds of holes in them that allow the fluid to go in and out right. that controls basically the rebounding and how fast and spool valves are specifically cut holes that allow the fluid to not create heat uh -huh. because heat is what causes a shock sorry let me show it to you there you go heat is what causes a shock to eventually stop working because the fluid gets hot viscosity gets too um 
Traviscus, right? Right, right. Stock shops working in. And what Multimatic says is that their shocks don't overheat. That's what they say. And so far, we really did put it through a really difficult obstacle. And the good news is it did really well. Also, I don't see any markings on the bottom of your uh, sliders. Now, these are different types of sliders than some of the other vehicles that are out there. These are actually mounted to the body, not the frame. And People there's, complain about that. That's a good point. So there's two different schools of thought. One is when you hook it to the frame, it drops down even lower, and you, you lose some of your ground clearance. But, of course, you're on the frame, which is the strongest part of the truck. According to GM, this is a good place to put it, and these work really well. So that's basically how they had it. Yeah. I'm on my knees in front of him. I feel strange. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I really like, and this is something that happened to us when we were driving the Ford Raptor. We took the Raptor on thins and things, over at uh, Moab, right? Did really good, but it did bottom out. And the reason why is because down here, there are exhausts. And this is a nice clean design. The departure angle on this truck, despite the fact that it has a pretty good size bed. What is this, about a five foot bed? Five and a half feet. Five and a half foot bed. The departure angle is really good. And so when he was going over rocks and whatnot, as he left, he wasn't scraping. That's a big difference than the Raptor that we had, which had those exhausts down here. Yeah, we kind of made a Ford Oval. One of them, just one of them. <laughs> Roman managed to only do one. The other one was fine. But that's the thing. This is a true off-road truck. They've done everything they can within a budget to make this as off-road capable as possible. And by the way, guys, the uh, diesel does have the six-speed automatic. Yes. Uh, this has the eight-speed. So that is correct. Great. And the diesel is about $3,500 more. Is it worth it? <sighs> Depends on who you talk to. You do get more range. You do get really good torque. Those are great. And it's $3,500 more. So, Chris, why didn't you get the diesel? Um, they were actually harder to find. I, I found this at a dealer. I didn't order this ahead of time. Um, looking around in the inventory around Phoenix, um, I maybe saw a couple of diesels. And for me personally, I just couldn't justify the extra price. Um, I don't know. I drove one. It seems fine, but it just didn't seem So the seem comments are, why would you get this over a Razor, or why wouldn't you get a Raptor instead? Because Raptors are really expensive. Even a used Raptor was more expensive than this truck was. Yeah. Yeah. And he's already had a Ford. He wanted to try something different and new. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go back. Uh, thank you again for uh, taking the time to stop by and actually go on a cliffhanger. Of course. Uh, Nathan, uh, if they're interested in going up Cliffhanger, yeah, and sit down, guys. Yeah. What's the address they contact? Well, two things. If you're interested in being on on the show, dude, I love my ride. We'd love to feature your truck. Absolutely. So, uh, ask at tfltruck.com. Send mm -hmm. us an email at ask at tfltruck.com. We'd love to have you. Uh, we all have all kinds of trucks and cars. Once again, that's ask at tfltruck.com. Yeah, send us a picture of your truck, and uh, you know we'll feature your truck. Come on in, and uh, you know get a little walk around, and we'd love to kind of learn more about why and how come you bought that truck. What if it's a car? Cars will do too. We'll do cars as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. And and as usual, we like to thank our guests, right, Nathan? Yes. Here you go. Oh, awesome. Ah, uh, uh, look at that. Here's some swag for you. So there we go. And by the way, Chris was in the Navy seven years, I believe. I was. So yes. thank you for your service. We appreciate it. And be careful because he's working on like highly classified rockets or some stuff like that. Something like that? Yeah, something like that. That's really cool. And we're not going to piss you off. So that's <laughs> so happy that the truck made it so, back in one so piece. A couple of questions. Yeah, here we go. How's the road noise? Uh, it's barely noticeable. It, it, it's, yeah. I can tell you from experience. Uh, at least with the gas engine, it is a little bit quieter than the Tacoma TRD Pro that we had. That had a little bit of road, road, bleh, road hum. This one doesn't have that, so the road noise was well controlled. How comfortable is the seat? The seat is really comfortable. That was one of the bigger selling points of it. For tall people, it's a lot easier than the Tacoma and, I think, over the uh, Nissan Frontier as well. But the Tacoma, definitely, it's more comfortable because that seat, you're on the floor. This one is a nice height. Yeah. And did you have to pay over a sticker? Yeah, you, you always have to pay over stickers. There's always dealer fees. There's taxes and stuff that are never included, which, which is a bummer, but um, it was still under 50 grand after everything. People are asking, does independent front suspension uh, decrease road noise? Um, you know, that's funny that you mentioned that. I had somebody ask me a similar question about the uh, power wagon we had a little while back because that had a solid front axle. I don't think there's that much of a difference between the two of them. Um, once again, this was a relatively quiet truck, and the only one I can really pit it against is either a Jeep, and all Wranglers are pretty loud, mm. or 
the power wagon. And the power wagon is a much larger vehicle, so I think it's very difficult, at least right now, to tell the difference between a straight axle, solid axle, or independent front suspension. Andrew wants to know, how's the gear selector compared to a full-size Silverado? Mm. I mean, I don't know what a full-size Silverado drives like, but even with the 8-speed automatic transmission, it doesn't really hunt for gears that much. And the actual gear selector, I believe, on the Silverados are usually column shift. Mm -hmm. His is a uh, shift on the floor, so a little different there. Yeah. And Zane, if you want to bring your Raptor down, ask at tfltruck.com 2017, and we'll uh, run it up. Uh, we haven't run a Raptor up the new cliffhanger, have we yet? Not the new Raptor, no. No, not the new one, just the old one. Yeah, just the old one. So if you're interested in that, you'll have to go, go across our producer, Andre, and he'll have to give you the okay. Hey, and what is the, how much does it weigh? Do we know how much it weighs? That's a really good question. Ooh, I, I want to say it's somewhere around 7,000 pounds, but it could be way wrong. That sounds about right. I know that... Um, the regular Colorado with the four-wheel drive package and the longer bed with the diesel, which is a heavier engine, is around 6,000 and change. Mm -hmm. So a couple hundred, several hundred pounds more with all the armor and everything is possible. And why did you get black? Uh, that's just what I found. I actually really wanted the green color, but I like the black. So. Right. Yeah, the green, the green is nice. I think it's 6,000? 5,000. 5,000. Yeah. It might be 6,500 on the diesel, right? It's a little more. No, they're both 5,000. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both 5,000 5, 5, 5, pounds. Limited, not by the engine, but by the uh, shock The suspension. Yeah. The suspension, yeah. and yeah. So if you want to tow anything really heavy, obviously there are other trucks to get, but then you wouldn't be buying this. This is really geared for pulling like a trailer with two motorcycles in it or something like that. Yeah. And you tow? I do not. No. Are you going to tow? Uh, who knows? Maybe down the road. We had this conversation actually going up Cliffhanger, yeah. and he said, you know, it's like, I guess I could tow a Razor, but why bother? Because I'm going off-road in this, which is the truth. It's the real off-roader. And John, the bed is five and a half feet. So uh, do us one more favor uh, and talk about Cliffhanger, because it's hard to show how steep it is on video. So every time we do a video, people are like, my Civic can do it. Can your Civic do it? No, absolutely not. <laughs> and he has not. a Civic. Yeah, he, he owns a Civic. Yeah, I own a Civic. It's, you can't go up Cliffhanger in a, in a two-wheel drive truck. Um, it's, it looks difficult on camera, like watching it, but seeing it in person, I was just like, wow, this is a lot steeper. Yeah, that was the first thing you said, especially when I was pointing at the top of it and saying, yeah, we're going up there, and then you could see the rocks as they go up. Uh, the bottom line is that most of the rocks you're seeing there would probably tear the bottom out of a crossover, uh, and even your S average SUV. You cannot make up that hill without having a real four-wheel drive system. You just cannot make well, up guys, that Guys, stay hill. tuned to TFL Truck next week where we'll actually show you that video. So That's right. Yeah, you'll get to see uh, uh, Chris and his truck uh, going up uh, Cliffhanger 2.0. Well, Nathan, I think that's about all the questions. That's about all the questions we're going to do. But, guys, this turns into a regular video in just a little bit, and we will revisit this and try to answer a few more questions. So thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. For those of you guys who are put on timeout, Watch your language. And Andy says he loves your truck, uh, and they're looking forward. And uh, Michael says, Rochelle says she's looking forward to the video. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later.